evening everyone i am shruti and i would like to welcome everyone to this inauguration of finite versus infinite a group exhibition including the artworks of 12 artists and the show has been curated by dr ashvi bhagat and yes i'll pass on the mic to anita ma'am um i'll invite mr mukund pandanavan and dr bhagat Panyapan sir and Anita ma'am and Sharad sir to come and light the lamp. thank you very much uh, it gives me great pleasure to uh, to welcome our chief guest mukund and uh, i'd like to say a few words about him uh, mukund is a familiar face to a lot of us who have been following the newspapers for a long time he was the uh, editor of the hindu he earlier worked in the indian express he also worked as the editor of the hindu business line so he's had a long career in journalism writing and reflecting on uh, various intersections that we have you know art society um, culture politics the environment so and um, mukund has always been a very thoughtful writer and someone who is uh, been consistently very interested in contemporary art i remember in 2012 we had a very small exhibition at our home and uh, mukund just uh, you know turned up we turned uh, for that uh, exhibition in which we converted our home so mukund has been a very strong supporter he is currently the um, distinguished professor of philosophy at the kriya university so he continues to be with the world of uh, of letters and i thought for such an exhibition like this which uh, ashrafi has so thoughtfully put together uh, we could not have got somebody better than mukund who's been who's familiar who's been following the art scene for a long time so may i request mukund to say a few words following that uh, mr palneppan also yeah. um <clears throat> thank you very much uh, anita it's uh, it's really an honor and a privilege to be here um and i think one one of the unique things uh, is that uh, i was reading um uh, a little bit about the exhibition uh, in the indian express and and one of the things it said is that all the artists were young artists and it's just a fantastic that you can have an exhibition i think you need to curate uh basically and promote art at this uh you know from from people who are setting off and people who are just uh venturing out to make a name um i have been associated in one way or another with some people in the world of art i've known mr balnya fun for a very long time been a great admirer of his work um and also of course a frequent visitor to chola mandal and i will just use this occasion not to talk too long but just to remember uh something that mr joseph james who was my professor in college had once said and he said that he was talking about baroda actually in the baroda school and he said while it was obviously the artist that made the baroda school it was also very much also uh you know you need to give credit to the uh, art curators and the art historians and in that connection i think uh, one needs to applaud i think what is what is the real centerpiece of this uh, exhibition ashrafi who's been uh, associated with the world of art both as a historian and as a writer for a very very long time uh, great credit to you and uh, congratulations and congratulations to all of you on this exhibition and thank you very much for inviting me here to this wonderful space anita
we'll have Ashrafi speak at the end. But before that, I really want to ask Mr. Palniyapin to say a few words. And I say this every time he comes here, but I really think it's worth repeating. He's one senior artist who is so incredibly generous with his time, with his advice, uh, and just creating all kinds of ways in which artists from the region get a voice, get better practice. Even down, even when he was here a week ago, we spoke about how we should have some programs here for young artists or even senior artists about how to conserve art. We thought that that was one very important thing that young artists. So he's always thinking about the needs of the of the young artists of this region. So he's, I mean, I always get very moved by his generosity. I want him to say a few words. Thank you for the opportunity. So I mean, uh, uh, I'm, first, first of all, I'm congratulating all the participating artists and also Vaishya Fee, ma'am. And uh, uh, her curation always, you know, really very inspiring one. Always, you know, it's really, she brought the new phases now. Because I'm there in the field for many years and I'm seeing the trend changes of uh, trends. I mean, the present trends is totally different, I mean, than the, you know, uh, even uh, last. Uh, ten years, I'm seeing it. I mean, last ten years, you know, very, very different uh, changes is happening in the art field. Uh, I really liked it. Actually, a lot of uh, new energy is there. Actually, I, I mean, that's the re main reason I came to this exhibition. Since I'm part of the Dakshin Chitra, I'm congratulating once more again. I mean, all the artists who are participating, and it is a very, really a very good exhibition and a very good uh, curation. I'm very, th we are very thankful to Shivam ma'am. For the no, the no, no, it's a man. Go. It's okay. Good. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. So I cannot but say a few words about Ashrafi. I mean, I think just just to all of us to just take a second and think, what if Ashrafi did not write for the past twenty years? We would have had almost no history. Um, artist catalogues, to reviews, to, um, you know, to curating. So, um, really, the, the role that she's almost single-handedly played over the past, you know, quarter of a century is amazing. So, thank you very much for that. Just a quick introduction. Ashrafi was the head of the Department of uh, Fine Arts at Stella. She is an author, a critic, a writer, a curator, um, a person who is very supportive of, again, of young artists, very keenly. I mean, there are almost all exhibitions, whether, you know, she's a prominent as a chief guest or otherwise, I always bump into Ashrafi. So thank you very much for curating this and we really uh, absolutely love uh, what you have done and you've brought these wonderful artists to our attention. Thank you very much. Could I request you to say a few words? Thank you, Anita. Good evening, everyone, and the chief guest. Oh. Uh, before I begin, I think I would like to thank uh, Dr. Deborah Thiagrajan and Anita for giving me this opportunity to curate this show, uh, which was such an experience for me, working with 12 young artists. Uh, as a matter of fact, the show itself marks the celebration of the talent, the brilliance of these young artists in the way they have interpreted the concept, which is finite versus infinite. The concept itself is abstract, but the way they have converted or translated it through correspondence of their ideas with the visual language, vocabulary, and the expression is something really marvelous. I was a little bit doubtful as to you know, how much they'll be able to get to the crux of uh, analyzing this concept and bring it out visually. So uh, I would really say that uh, you know, confined within their finite space, of the environment, of the urban spaces, how, uh, you know, in the limitless imagination, they have brought out their expressions. And the expressions are quite diverse, and uh, the artistic statements and expressions are equally diverse because of the medium they have chose to work with. So there is ceramic, there is sculpture, there is uh, installation, and there is also a little bit uh, scientific installation, which has been produced by Sharath, which is very, very impressive. I think I would just like to give one, you know, a few sentences about each artist's works. Uh, beginning with uh, Darshana. Darshana's uh, world is one of quantum physics. 
and uh, she has interpreted the world as a series of molecules and atoms. She said that is what the infinite world is all about and how she translates that into the finite aspect of the nature which she has actually uh, painted with dots. It's very impressive because uh, the dots just seem to go into infinity and so her translation through quantum theory of, uh, of physics and also her technique of handling that. Then there is uh, Unna here, Unna Malay, and her works of uh, ceramics, where she has made use of the spindles, which are the boat shaped spindles, which is used for weaving. And she says there is infinite possibilities of doing that in weaving with the, with the finite shape of the spindle itself. So there is color, there is imagination, which you know comes into play. And that is what she has done. You can see the ceramic works here. Plus she has also used, uh, you know, the fruit, the apple, which from its beginning, then, you know, to its growth, to its decay. And uh, she has juxtaposed that with the life of the human as she has shown it in the stock. Then coming to Prithvi. Prithvi's works are based on negotiations with humanity and nature. And he feels that, you know, uh, every aspect of nature he loves, whether it is a patch of sunlight, whether it is just a, you know, a gentle breeze flowing, or whether it is, you know, the rustle of the trees. He says that these are all finite, but there is deep, infinite existence which one can find within that. And you can see that he uses the wood, which is very much an organic material, and shows the finite human being who tries to break the boundaries and reach greater heights. Then there is the works of Manas here, very, very powerful, very, very expressionistic. And uh, he uses memory of people and images and of things around him. And uh, he says that for him, there, are, there is chaos in life, there are imbalances, disorders, etc., which is not within his control, so it remains very finite. But then when it comes to his painting, when it comes to his technique, he's so spontaneous that spontaneity is boundless. And that boundlessness, you know, can be seen in his works in the way he has painted it. They're extremely expressionistic. They come straight from his heart. They come with a lot of feelings and with a whole lot of imagination, you know, as he integrates it with his works. We have the works of Namrata whose uh, dynamics of language, whether it should be the realistic language or whether it should be an abstract language, and between those interplay of the dynamics, she has created works which are quasi-abstract, quasi-figurative, and she uses the human form as a very finite form and then uses the abstraction in the background, you know, which can be infinite in many ways, you know, because it can be through, done through layers. And it is that layering which one can see in the abstraction, which she sees it as uh, infinite. So here it is a dynamic inter interaction or the interplay of both the figurative as well as the abstract language. Then we have the works of Jagat. Now Jagat's works are actually, he says, they are all uh, moments that he represents and you know, which comes from his thoughts and his experiences. Since it is moments, you know, he has very beautifully used the correspondence of his technique, which is very patchy, which is very sketchy. That is to show that if you are in the moment, you cannot, you are not permanent. But it is a kind of a moment which will again pass. And he, you know, just picks up subjects as he sees around him. And accordingly, that's, uh, that's how you see the finite thought, you know, which has been converted, translated into a canvas. The first one shows, you know, the girl playing with the paint. That can be infinitely where she can be playing with the paint. Or the next one, you know, where there are three girls sitting and suddenly there's a watermelon which comes from the background because those are moments that he has seen, that he has experienced, and that is how he brings it here onto the, can onto the canvas. So the finite moments coming from his infinite thoughts and experiences. Then we have, of course, outside. Uh, Rohini's work. Rohini's works are on po uh, politics, identity. And for her, it is the parameters of beauty. 
who defines beauty in society. So she has created four canvases and you know she has given it a sacred angle where she represents the three goddesses, Saraswati, Lakshmi and Kali. And of course in the center is the crow. It's the beautiful portrait of the crow which reminds us that beauty is not something which is external, but beauty is something of the soul. And you know that uh, juxtaposition, that interplay, is, she has brought it out very, very beautifully. And where Kali is represented, you know there's a cat next to her as evil or whatever. And then in the background is the representation of the beauty from the Ajanta painting. One of the very beautiful figures that has been there. So this is how she says, the finite world and the finite thoughts on beauty and how you know the transformation can lead to infinite representations and infinite ideas itself on beauty itself then we have uh, who's there talamutu talamutu's uh, works are he says that uh, finite can be understood as permanent as a constant change it's a constant change that can reshape nature as well as the environment, while infinity has the possibility of the change remaining constant. I think that's a very beautiful thought in the way he has translated it. And you know, he has shown it as birds flying, which you can see it there. And also, that's the finite birds with their wings traveling infinite distances. And at the same time, he has also so, a sculpture with the seeds and the seeds of various sizes from the minutest to the biggest the shape carries I mean when you're looking at it it is nothing but it has the full potential of change transformation growth and a continuous process of growth and change which remains of course very infinite then who else is there yes how can I forget Ram Kumar Ram Kumar and his monumental work which he has created in uh, uh, cement uh, blocks. And his idea here is also that how nature, you know, has been destroyed by human beings. So he says, nature has the capacity to keep growing, to keep changing and keep developing. It is infinite. That's what the nature is all about. But then on the other side, you know, he shows the urban space. He says, this is the urban space which has been swallowed by the human beings. And in that urban space, an elephant is lost because that is his space which is being taken over. And it's a very beautiful representation, you know, in the way he has shown it. And he has shown it as a circle, which is again an infinite, you know, symbol. And uh, so that way, uh, his work is very, very powerful. It is very, very uh, poignantly evocative. As a matter of fact, I would say that each and every artist works here is very evocative. It's, uh, you know, the thinking artist which is at the fore here and the way they have, you know, brought forth their artistic expressions. Sri Lakshmi. Sri Lakshmi's works is to do with the world of nature and from nature she has picked up just the tree. And it is the tree and its environment, you know, that remains at the heart of her works. She says the tree itself is finite, if you're looking at it physically. But then it becomes, you know, infinite in the way, uh, you know, it provides different kinds of offerings to the world of animals, to the world of birds, as well as to the world of humans itself. So it's a very beautiful idea which she has represented also through the monochromatic colors. I think I've done with all the 12 artists and uh, I want to congratulate all of you and uh, I want to say that may you all reach infinite heights of artistic expressions in your career and in your work and that you keep going, breaking the finite spaces that is around you. But before I give it in, I just want to say a word of thank you and very much in appreciation to uh, Shruti, to first to Anita, in the way she meticulously, systematically, she organized and she followed up with all the logistics that were concerned with the exhibitions with me. And that was really very heartening to know, you know, that so much of interest has been there and that there's so much of backup which is there. And of course, Shruti, the gallery manager, who remained, you know, con 
continuously at work bringing in and putting in order all the logistics that is required for a big curated show like this which concerns 12 artists and you know the various things which just goes into it she has been tremendously uh, what do i say very very uh, you know uh, helpful in uh, organizing as well as in organizing and putting up the exhibition itself so thank you shruti for that thank you anita for that and then of course the supporting staff you know of the dakshin chitra without which this would have never happened mr Mur murli the assistant gallery manager then mr Ka karuna karan the carpenter and mr mani the electrician and of course uh, prema akka who came and gave us tea whenever it was required thank you all very much for wonderful support if not for you this would actually you know wouldn't have materialized in a beautiful show that is here so thank you very much and i hope you all enjoy the show i also want to add a thanks to uh, sami to reka to our publicity in charge so thank you all and thank you all for coming and supporting and being part of this uh, show now informally i think uh, artists are there you can you know discuss if you want to do a walk around uh, but you can always informally go to each artist they're all here and ask them your questions or have a conversation with them thank you all for coming thank you